Here we are, Saturday morning, 21 minutes late. Hmm, that, that's not so good, eh? And I, I know, I know, I know. Why, why am I late? Because you're late. Uh, okay, that, that's it. Because okay. you have to make all the content. I know, I know, I know. So I don't see anything. Okay, okay. <laughs> the Leo Zagami show with Leo and Christy Zagami. Welcome, everybody. Saturday, the May the 7th, to say the American way, or the 7th of May, saying it the English way. Uh, 2022. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> How is Chrissy today? I'm fine. Okay. I'm First, just associating myself with the topic. Because it's a very scary topic? Mm-hmm. Uh, I Last guess time so. the topic was mm-hmm. very disturbing to me. So, so well, but uh, of course it was appreciated by all our viewers. Uh, so here we are with another dark topic. How come I can't see the chat? Okay, here is the chat, Christy. Okay. <laughs> hi, Katie. Hi, Alberto. Hi, Corey. Hi, Junka. Hi, hi, Bruce. Hi, Bruce. I see you. Fantasioso. Fantasio. Who is Fantasioso? Uh, then we have somebody called Gianluca. Okay. okay, we have a few Italians okay, that, of course, uh, are anticipating also my Italian broadcast, which goes on later on. Uh, later later in the in the day um due to the time difference okay so how did i decide to talk about today's topic <laughs> okay, it's a is 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 a controversial topic, but it's a topic that you can of course find uh, defined very well in volume six point sixty six, which is just behind me. Um, very important book as well, of course, as my latest book, volume seven of my confessions, which you should all purchase so you can facilitate and help us uh, move on uh, with our mission and uh, no. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we, we always uh, have problems in, in, in even getting small donations, but then there is a few people that help us out, but we think it's unfair on them. So you should all participate with a small donation of some kind towards the Leo Zagami show. Okay, so how did I... Uh, decide to discuss today this specific subject amongst also the news of the week because of course today we we will uh, uh, as usual talk about uh, the news of the week but we have also added a topic a topic that came in when I was reading this article uh, from the mainstream news MSN uh, more mainstream than that you can't get which really uh, was quite interesting and brought up uh, uh, a very interesting point. So let's go to the article in question that uh, was originally published by the LA Times. So uh, here, Southern California, LA Times. The exosims is something we can't quite quit. And we can now go into the reading of it, of course, also with the help of Christy. Okay, so I will start, then you can carry on. So, as a thriller writer, writer, I'm never certain where my research will take me, and often it takes me to very dark places, says the writer. Here, demonic possession, for example. Very beautiful image, this one. eh? Uh, For for once, uh, they didn't want to really scare too much the public. Uh, it's, it's a little bit more, of course, if you then go into the details, it is pretty scary because this is a demon coming out of a possessed person with somebody doing an exorcism. So, Christy, can you read this article for us? Okay. Possession is now recognized in the American Psychiatric Association's Diagnostic and St- Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. I have on my desk a letter 
from an exorcism team at a Southern California Catholic church telling me that more people of good will have more people people of good will have been experiencing various forms of spiritual attack since the onset of the pandemic. And, and don't you remember that that was one of the things I said right at the beginning of the pandemic, mm -hmm. Christy? And it's actually a topic which I also touched in my books because, of course, uh, I was one of the first people to denounce this possibility with people locked in their houses facing their own demons and uh, the Catholic Church uh, that, uh, of course, uh, didn't want to send their exorcist around with a scary pandemic. And so the people were really left alone. And what about alone. Not, they, they're not using the right exorcism? Well, that is something else that we discuss in detail in volume 6.66, but specifically regarding the pandemic, uh, there was this, uh, this problem. But please uh, carry on. Okay, and that the team is overwhelmed with its current workload. Mr. Scott Peck, the well-known psychiatrist who wrote about spiritual development in The Road Less Traveled, treated two patients he diagnosed as possessed and helped do exorcisms on both of them. He admitted he went from being a complete non-believer to a complete believer in the demonic ability to possess. A recent Vatican-sponsored exorcist conference, which is the yearly conference, which I also talk about, by the way, in my books, uh, which uh, uh, started uh, uh, with uh, Father Amort, who was inspirational inspiration figure in creating this organization of exorcists, uh, which, uh, of course, also, as you know, Christy, uh, fought the new way of the exorcism that was established in 1999 uh, due to the uh, whole transformation of the Catholic faith that, uh, of course, was forced by the Second Vatican Council. But please uh, carry on here. A recent Vatican-sponsored exorcism conference in Rome was attended by 250 priests from 51 countries. The tools of the trade in Catholicism are simple, a purple stole, a crucifix, holy water, a copy of exorcisms and related supplic supplications, most Catholic, most Catholic exorcisms these days take place in a church office with the possessed sitting in a chair. Modern medical practice agrees that physical well-being and mental well-being are intertwined with the spirituality. There are countless examples of this. Somatization disorder is defined as recurrent and multiple medical symptoms generally with no discernible organic cause. The symptoms are physical, mental, and spiritual. A fear survival response to emotion and psychology, physi physiology, integrative medicine is the combination of treating mind, body, and spirit, an alternative to traditional psychiatries. Psychoneurology bridges ancient wisdom with leading edge technology to pioneer an entirely new paradigm <laughs> in healing and wellness, according oh. to its accreditation board. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I don't have my glasses on, so I'm doing my best. <laughs> Ah, yeah? Okay, 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 okay. It was kind of all blurry. But... Okay, so for those people who have not read this book, uh, this book uh, in particular uh, has, of course, the secrets of the right of exorcism and the secrets also uh, of understanding the four stages of demonic possession. Uh, it's, it's basically a chapter which I open uh, with uh, a citation from my old friend Rimankov talking about uh, uh, this social change that is in fact an organized process of satanic possession. Um, this is, uh, and, and that is really the problem here. The Catholic Church itself tried to sabotage their own exorcist, the Roman Rite, in 1999. And that happened really when one of the most known exorcists here in the US died. I'm talking about Father Malachi Martin. Uh, so that is also a very weird coincidence, no? Um, coincidence. Now, uh, I have uh, really tried in my book to not speculate on a subject like this. So to also give uh, some 
scientifical opinion regarding the difference no, between a, psychi a psychiatric, uh, so-called psychiatric illness, no? And instead, the, 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 the possibility of a partial possession, and then, of course, a deeper levels of possession. And uh, I think that, I mean, I haven't, uh, of course, uh, reread my book in a while, but while I go through it, I'm quite impressed with the work. Uh, I must have been inspired, uh, of course, <laughs> by the Holy Spirit. Now, it, it actually talks here about uh, the annual course on exorcism that was mentioned by the article uh, that takes, uh, uh, of course, uh, that is held at the Regina Apostolorum Pontificum Anteum in Rome. Um, and uh, I think that is very important uh, uh, in today's show to discuss this subject because, like I said, at the beginning of the pandemic, and let me go a second, I mean, I can actually see if I can find it very easily here because it is on my website that right at the beginning of the pandemic, I tried to uh, discuss this uh, subject. Um, and so... What do you think about this subject, Christine? And uh, you know, of course, that I was the subject of uh, various uh, uh, exorcism. Uh, I discussed this topic very much with you uh, in private often. Um, it was a pretty amazing story of, of what you went through. You went to Egypt. Yes, yes. And that is uh, also uh, something that I... Uh, I talk about uh, in, uh, in in my book uh, here because uh, it is about uh, really fighting uh, the, the, the the evil that was casted on me by this uh, satanist and, uh, and 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 it was uh, a pretty strong battle let's say no mm -hmm. now um, I've uh, I've talked about, like I said, about this subject in my uh, on my website. Thank to uh, thank in some way here to uh, put this article to show this article to our viewers. In the meantime, welcome to the Leo Segami Show. Uh, Thirty-four minutes uh, after the hour, wherever you are, we operate in Pacific Standard Time, but of course. Uh, and why are people yeah. more possessed during the pandemic? I mean, there's different reasons for that. Well, first of all, they uh, they did something they shouldn't have done, which was uh, closing the places of worship of all religions. So that is already facilitating. Now, it seems like everything they tried to do uh, since the Second Vatican Council in the Catholic Church was to facilitate uh, uh, the possibility for the devil uh, to uh, to mingle in worldly affairs. Now, this uh, was a warning from uh, March 2021. Palm Sunday warning post says the devil is taking advantage of the pandemic. Uh, he finally realized that, uh, and, and he said it. And of course, uh, the 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 advantage that the devil had uh, uh, during the uh, pandemic was that people were locked up in their homes. And they couldn't really do anything to go out. And so, and they were also, like I explained in this book, the interaction with modern technology is not always a positive one. And some people uh, uh, get dragged into uh, the demonic, uh, maybe, I don't know going on certain sites, uh, uh, they can be occult sites, they can be pornographic sites, they can be all kinds of sites. Um, and of course, this uh, facilitates then the opening of, uh, of, 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 because you, you have to open yourself somehow to the demonic. The demonic just doesn't come in on its own. It's either invited, like, of course, by a conscious evo evoking of it. That is a different matter because those th that brings to the realm of controlled possession, which is more 
a realm to do with Satanists and occultists, and, and it's a completely different uh, matter here. Uh, but uh, then there is uh, the unconscious welcoming in your life of something truly evil that uh, maybe, uh, and, and the fact that a lot of people don't even believe anymore in the possibility there is a Satan, there is a devil. And so the more you don't believe, and the, the more easy it is for, for, for Satan to actually mess up with your lives. So please share this video, first of all, aside from putting like, because we really need your help to bypass the constant censorship that we have. And of course, we, we hope that that you can uh, maybe relate to your family and friends the fact that we are still broadcasting have been the subject of extreme censorship 15 channels removed uh, up until now starting from october 2020 so at the eve of the elections and then it just went on and carried on and years of work uh, disappeared but at the same time we decided to persist on this platform because other platforms don't have the same uh, reach. I mean, we, we of course, uh, have a presence still on uh, BitChute or uh, um, Rumble. Rumble. And of course, we are on Facebook because the Leo Lions the Game in America page has always been there all the time. And so, uh, we, we, we welcome people also that uh, join us from Facebook. Of course, our Sunday, uh, you know, tomorrow is Sunday. It's a special day. It's Mother's, Mother's day, day, no? Yeah. It's, it's a very important day. I hope you will all spend it with your mother. I unfortunately can't because my mother is back in Italy. I might not even be able to ever see her again. Maybe, maybe one day halfway through maybe in england or somewhere as i can't go back to italy but uh, um we are of course here discussing a subject of some importance because it's connected of course to uh, one of my uh, bestsellers which is this book here volume 6.66 and uh, uh, in this book, uh, I explained exactly the differences between the previous rite of exorcism and the one that, of course, uh, is uh, uh, the one that uh, uh, is encouraged now by the Vatican since 1999, but not encouraged by, by uh, Father Amort, uh, who was uh, inspirational to modern exorcists because he didn't believe that uh, the modern uh, form of exorcism in any way was uh, was as, uh, was actually able to exorcise the the people, no? Who, uh, of course, uh, at times go to the Catholic Church hoping that they can get uh, exorcised, or they go maybe to other. I mean, I myself personally was the subject. Uh, of a Catholic exorcism, but then I also was a subject of an Orthodox Coptic exorcism in Egypt, and as well as an Islamic one, I experienced various <laughs> forms of exorcism because I think that exorcism for people who do a spiritual battle is like a form of cleansing. And so uh, this uh, cleansing, of course, it has to be done in an efficient way. When I did the Catholic one, I did it uh, with a traditional uh, exorcism. In this, uh, in these pages here of my book, I explain exactly the number of words, the number of signs of the cross, and all that that changed between the old uh, form of exorcism. So it's obvious that in some way they have been trying to sabotage the original rite, which seemed to have been very efficient. Then, uh, of course, uh, I published in the English language the whole original rite, just so that people can really have an idea, even if, of course, then the language that we use usually is Latin. It's very important. But like I said earlier in the show, it's very important. Demonic possession or mental illness. This is... Uh, a very important topic. I've studied many books on the topic. I had brought one 
uh, here. Yeah. Yes, uh, where did he put it? Huh? He probably had it somewhere. I guess, I yeah. No, these are from. The uh, okay, okay, okay. Seems like we are missing something here. Did you bring it in the bathroom? Because well, I think it's over there. Okay, let me see. Huh? No, actually, I left it there on the <laughs> shelf, Christy, uh, as uh, you see uh, under the TV. But um, this book, which I have in particular here in my hands, uh, is uh, by a gentleman that most people in the English language know for his uh, passionate uh, work uh, regarding the field of ufology. He was a friend of the late Zachariah Sitchin. He himself is the seat. Corrado Balducci. Now, this book is a very rare book from the 70s, but he used to be an exorcist before he went into ufology. That was one of the things also that I talked about when I did my famous interview with Project Camelot back in 2007. And uh, um, this book, I think, is one of those books that gives you really an in depth. And it's uh, it's and and also it's very scientific in its approach, as well as uh, of course the historic elements of it. But it it, it really gives you the difference between the demonic possession and uh, the psychiatric illness, and it does it. Of course, here uh, there is all kinds of. Uh, uh, images of uh, possessed people uh, uh, and of course stories that are very macabre uh, uh, as it usually is in the case of demonic possession but like i said unfortunately this book is no longer available it should be translated in the english language i'm sure it will make an excellent book for the for the exorcist of today but maybe in, in the future what I'm thinking of doing, as I have so many books on the subject of exorcism, is, made, is basically to, to do my own book on, on the subject of exorcism, you know, really, uh, one day, because I think, uh, but though I did it in a way, because I think a volume 6.66 is already that book, maybe we can uh, give even more elements uh, regarding uh, one of the most important and underrated uh, subjects of our era. And that's why it was interesting to see, like, in a mainstream publication like the LA Times, picked up by, picked up by uh, MSN, uh, there was this, uh, this, uh, this article that really said, you know, now there is a recognition. Now there is a recognition. It's not like they are uh, messing up with this topic anymore. They're hiding it like they did in the past. Now they think, okay, it might be possible that uh, we need to understand there is a difference uh, between simply uh, mocking somebody for, uh, you know, for, for something that might seem like a, a weird belief and really a problem, uh, this is a real problem, and... Uh, a real problem about our own health because the thing is that uh, the exorcism is done on people that because also they've been uh, subject of this possession, they're also uh, at times fighting uh, some serious health problems. Mm -hmm. Some serious health problems. Now, now let's um, go m more into this article, uh, Christy. Uh, of uh, of today, because I think that we can find some interesting elements here. Okay, so here the 1973 movie The Exorcist, based on William Peter Blady's novel, fictionalized the real life exorcisms of a 14 year old boy. The final exorcism was done by a Jesuit priest in 1949 at. Alexian Brothers Hospital in St. Louis. Afterward, the room was sealed up. The boy got married, had a family, and a long career. He died in 2020, having never spoken publicly about what happened. So this uh, element here of the story 
uh, it was a boy, not a, a girl, actually, in the real uh, story that was picked up and then translated into a book and a movie. Uh, that, uh, of course, was very successful. And, by the way, it was fictionalized, but they had on set the presence, co constant presence of a Jesuit who was actually also acting in the movie. I explained this in my book, Volume 6.66. And, of course, the main figure was inspired by the infamous Pierre Teilhard de Carden, who is this important Jesuit uh, who uh, was also an anthropologist, an archaeologist, and somebody who, of course, uh, had many talents, aside from being an exorcist, who inspired uh, uh, even the, the, the birth of the Internet. Uh, so this uh, and the film 2001 Space Odyssey. So, I mean, we have uh, definitely some very interesting discussions regarding Pieter Al Decaden every now and then. Um, let's move uh, further and, uh, of course, Exorcisms were secretive then, hidden, denied. But today, exorcism is mainstream. You see, exorcism is mainstream today. It's kind of going mainstream. Catholic exorcist father Vincent Lampert, an Indiana priest, is on YouTube. So is Monsignor. Monsignor and licensed psychologist Stephen J. Rosett, Diary of American Exorcist, among others. Some priests conduct exorcisms by cell phone. The Archdiocese of Washington's website includes a request request an exorcism. <laughs> yeah, a request an form. exorcism form. Well, I mean, uh, it's That's quite so incredible good. how it has changed. You see the the the, the whole uh, the whole situation has really changed, uh, and, and, and since, of course. Uh, the the beginning of this uh, this whole uh, um, let's say frenzy about exorcism which was triggered by the book uh, and by the film especially the exorcist so exorcist by cell phone i don't know about that really uh, but uh, having said that you know uh, do you always have to have like can you exercise yourself well, I mean, exercise yourself. Like you uh, Jesus, well, I mean, if if the, of course so that is a different matter. If you have a really a very strong faith, maybe, but uh, it's 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 of course something that uh, I mean, it's 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 not recommended because exercising yourself, uh, you you and depends also by the level of possession here you are uh, you have because I mean I'm sure that that's possible if you have a, a weaker form of possession. But it's, it might be very difficult if you are uh, even uh, moving things around. And, 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 and so we have uh, forms uh, or like uh, telekinesis and other paranormal activities surrounding you. Uh, and, and, and it might not be possible. It might not be possible. So it is, it is definitely possible in the weaker forms of exorcism and maybe those phone calls are addressed to those weaker forms of exorcism in which you can uh, in some way uh, I would say operate a prayer of relief uh, on yourself having said that uh, I think uh, it's very difficult it's very difficult definitely but what what do you think about um, demonic influence on people just generally um, having this demonic influence on them without being possessed. And then, you know, these things attach. Okay, no, I mean, like I said, uh, and I explain also uh, in my book, there is uh, definitely some weaker uh, forms of, ex of, of possession. And those weaker forms of possession, they might be even possible to, in some times, exercise by phone. Here, in fact, I wrote in my book, Exorcism by Phone. Remember, this book was published in early 2019, but everything we have seen then happening from the beginning of the pandemic seems to be uh, pretty much uh, happening. Now, um, here I, I've, uh, I've wrote about it, and uh, I, I said that, uh, of course, we have... Uh, a more traditional uh, way of approaching also the subject of exorcism and a less traditional way. But uh, I'm more inclined, of course, uh, 
uh, to uh, approach it in the traditional way, so to speak. Um, we are not here discussing uh, some incredible conspiracy theory. There is a reality in, uh, in, in uh, the problem of uh, possession, especially in modern society, in a society that is, uh, in a way, being manipulated and uh, basically put in the hands of the enemy. The, 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 the legion of Satan is growing and is able to uh, do more damage now than in any time of history due to the weakness of our society. But also, like I said, the pandemic, the closing of all the um, the Catholic churches, but of churches of all denominations, the synagogues, the mosque, every religious institution was closed down. In a way, uh, the, the, the fact that you didn't have the opportunity to go to a church even, because uh, going and participating to a mass, uh, a service of any kind, is always a, a minor form of exorcism, or even an exorcism. You know, receiving uh, the blessings. That's why then you have uh, in those uh, um, more uh, tense possession cases their hate for the religious and the sacred that becomes evident. They can't just go into a church. They can't even see a cross. They have a very bad affliction. And the cases of uh, demonic possessions and the disturbance uh, of their emotion is uh, then interacting also with the religious symbols. So I think that uh, uh, the analysis, I like the fact that with Balducci there is uh, uh, all the various disturbances that you can have and then going through these various, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the fact that you have tactile disturbance, the, the smell, you smell strange things or you start having hallucinations of various kinds and the hallucinations, of course, uh, are also part of this uh, demonic takeover. So today we are, then you have disturbances in the attention span, in, uh, in, in the way you thinking, in your intelligence, uh, that I guess weaker, what do you think, Christy? I think also the fact that they did all these rituals and opened up all these portals, like we talked about in our last show, it also facilitates the problem. But there is also a problem with the drugs. Yeah, and alcohol. Uh, that is another problem, which, of course, I uh, talked about very much in my book. The problem is, uh, you know, when you are using uh, drugs uh, today, especially uh, very strong chemical uh, drugs uh, that uh, screw up your brain and open portals to the demonic. But even cocaine opens portals to the demonic. I mean, watch what has happened to, and we can say that this is really a uh, testimony, no? Johnny Depp. <laughs> You're going to say Johnny Depp. This now because, I mean, it is. I mean, Watch this individual. He uh, is a very successful actor. But like we said also in the past, uh, uh, I think here, I mean, he, he, he stayed too much in part with some of his roles. That is a form of possession. And at the same time, he has opened himself from a very young age to the use of substances that, uh, of course, then uh, can really facilitate this uh, demonic possession. So Johnny Depp, poor guy, it's, it's definitely, I mean, look at uh, how he acted. So, I mean, hallucinations are often, uh, you know, they happen to people who are also on drugs. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and so there is, uh, of course, different kinds of hallucinations. I mean, the possessed individual can claim he's hearing voices. Of course, when you see somebody who is talking a language he never spoke before, or several languages he never spoke before, and uh, he is uh, 
Uh, he has an adverse reaction to any kind of religious symbol. And uh, at that point, you can say the guy is generally possessed. You know, I mean, <laughs> that is definitely something that uh, um, there is a, a diabolic forms of infestation, like you said before, no? Mm -hmm. That uh, maybe they have participated to a black mass. They have uh, interacted with something dark. But even, you know, even playing a video game can really bring you into the demonic realm and it's something that people don't don't think it's uh, no and they've commercialized the ouija board for kids i mean like well it's always been made by you know a game company that makes all the games so then they make it very um innocent like the ouija board you know yeah, yeah. they think kids think it's a game and and then they get on there and they have problems, so it's better not to touch any Ouija board. Now, the problem is, uh, of course, uh, the difference you now that you have between mental illness and uh, a demonic possession. Now, if you remember, when this is incredible and it happened, I mean, this is like one of the most far out things that happened in my life, really. While they locked me up in 2014 in a mental, after crash, uh, destroying my door, because I was participating to the pitchfork insurrection revolution in Italy, the social unrest that went on in Italy, the Italian authorities had decided to lock me in a mental asylum. Imagine that. I mean, that's uh, something out of a Soviet Union playbook. But Christy knows very well that in that place where she was coming to visit me daily, uh, a black man arrived from Africa who was possessed who was literally bouncing off his bed and it was like how was it christy well he he was supposed to share a room with you and um and and your mother she just like really she got she she uh, when she heard that that they had put him in the room with you she really got upset and she was like just wailing and you know no 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 she really like she might i don't know i don't want to say but um but in any case so yeah, what happened was like... that in the middle of the night the guy was literally <laughs> levitating on his bed and and what happened is that they didn't put him in my room thanks god but what happened was they called me the doctors knowing that uh, i had been in the past uh, not only somebody who was subject to exorcism, but myself, I had had an experience as an exorcist because I actually was involved in exorcising people uh, and, or places. They uh, couldn't reach the local uh, monks. And so they asked me to intervene and exorcise this uh, subject using also that relic of Padre Pio that I had, which is Padre Pio is the same Padre Pio is I have a relic of a saint here with me, which is given only to the exorcist, and to use it to fight uh, the devil that was inside this guy. So I went for it. I actually, at 2 o'clock, 1.30 1 at night, in the middle of a very awkward situation, because officially I was a patient inside this hospital, <laughs> they asked me, and this is, I don't think it ever happened in the history of mankind. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> it could only happen in my life. They asked me to exorcise this gentleman, and I recited the prayer of exorcism using also this uh, relic from Padre Pio. Initially, I didn't take out the relic, so I wanted to see first what kind of effect there was with the prayer uh, I gave. And suddenly, when he started to get really, uh, I took out this relic and, uh, and I went into the second part of the prayer and the guy and and he was exercised he was exercised uh he was able to sleep and uh at that point i said thank you very much uh, ladies and gentlemen as you can see i mean maybe the psychiatric community has a lot to learn from uh, from the exorcist so it was definitely a very incredible, and the guy, of course, uh, had been possessed because he had been 
the subject of that uh, animist uh, voodoo style religions that uh, unfortunately are found all over Africa uh, and, and that uh, are part of, of, of Africa. I mean, animism is part of Africa. So I uh, don't usually like to tell too much uh, this uh, story uh, to, to everybody around, but today I wanted to say it because, I mean, it brings me back some very bad memories. I mean, it was really a terrible moment in my life in which I myself was suffering because these people had intervened when they shouldn't in my own life, but I was trying to bring also, of course, a relief to somebody else. And I think that God uh, um, was happy. Yeah. Absolutely. So it is a definitely a war and a crusade against demons and uh, i'm glad that i've been fighting it uh, most of my life at times i failed in the sense that i felt that uh, i wasn't capable of exercising any longer myself like you were asking me before no and then i had to go to somebody that uh, cleansed me of those demons you should tell that story well i mean one of the most uh, particular stories uh, was uh, the one uh, of me in, uh, in Egypt uh, uh, with Madame Fula, uh, who was uh, this incredible uh, spiritual uh, uh, leader of the Coptic Church, which is the most ancient Christian church in the world, really, because if you think Christianity, of course, is born in the Middle East, of course, we can say that St. Peter brought it to Rome and all that, but in a way, Jesus went to Egypt before St. Peter went to Rome. Uh, but in any case, um, I queued up in, 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 in an area, uh, in uh, poverty area, uh, street, an area stricken by poverty in the suburbs of uh, Cairo. I was brought there uh, by the uh, family of Butrus Butrus Gali. Uh, I went up there and uh, I saw this long line of people, both Muslims and Christians, queuing to have a blessing or an exorcist by this uh, Madame Fula, this uh, old Greek lady who was living uh, in Egypt. And uh, she had, of course, a translator to Arab and then to English, so I could understand. Uh, she saw me and she decided that because then she had to decide, you know, you had like an entrance of this home, then you went into a living room and then she had to decide who to exercise. She shut, the, I remember the, uh, the, 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 what, uh, you know, like it was like there was this uh, open windows, uh, you know, you, you, on the road, we were at the third, I think third or fourth floor of a building and then she shut everything. She, it was like, wow, I said, what, what, we're doing? what, what, what are we doing here? A uh, some kind of medium science, uh, how you say, sense, 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 no, sense? Uh, so no, no, in the mediums, when you have spirit, seance, seance, sorry. Uh, but she didn't have the windows closed before for the other people, no, no, she wanted to close it, and we had more than one, it was me and others because she had to decide who to bring for the exorcist. She closed. And uh, it wasn't a, a sign. Are you going, son? Sayon? Sayon, sorry, 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 in English. Sorry. Um, and so at that point, uh, she decided I was the first one to go for the exorcism. The exorcism was conducted in her kitchen. I mean, it was a scene reminiscent of that uh, lady in the Matrix movie. Uh, but, but in any case, um, I was brought into the kitchen uh, I was made to sit down. She started to cleanse me, well, like they do with this uh, kind of like um, sage? yeah, sage or something. And, were, huh? and then she started to boil lead, and I had she had basically this boiling lead that she poured on my my. There was a pan with the cold water. And she poured the lead on the pan on my head. It was pretty scary. Uh, I had some visions. I was closing my eyes because, of course, I, I was scared of the lead uh, mainly. But the, the water captured the demons uh, that literally materialized. The lead, uh, the lead, the liquefied lead, 
becomes hard in cold water immediately. And the crazy thing was that there were 220 demons. You can actually see, you could actually see the main demon with the horns inside the coat. And you know, you can't make this stuff up because it was liquid lead that is poured. Uh, but uh, when it was like on top of the head, I could feel the prrr, you know, because uh, when you pour the lead on the on the water, it makes a noise like and you can feel it. So it was incredible how we, uh, me and uh, I went there with my friend Paul Bebralovic uh, and his sister, and we went there and uh, we were, of course, welcome because the Butrus Gali family, it's a pa they are the patrons of the Coptic Church, so they had, of course. Uh, uh, hmm? Did she say anything when she was like after, like? Well, she said she, she definitely said that there was uh, this uh, powerful demon, and uh, that uh, was a sort of. She said something like it was barking. You know, it was like a barking demon uh, that was kind of like then taken and that of course the curse was made by a black magician which was the case because i had been fighting a war with this norwegian black magician and what they did in norway was outrageous because of this uh, black magician himself worked in a mental institute and he was capable of uh, having me locked up then fortunately though the buddhist galley family which because Ralph Butrus Gary, the brother of the now deceased Butrus Butrus, was the head of the United Nations. He um, is married with a Norwegian lady, uh, and, and of course, Paul Bebaric is the son, though Paul Bebaric is actually the son of a NASA scientist, and that, so that's why he has also an American passport. But basically, um, they saw the situation in which I was brought unjustly in Norway and they tried to intervene and so they actually intervened with the norwegian government saying listen you have to send us leo to egypt and they were they put some serious pressure on the norwegian government which uh, i must always thank them for that and then on my way to egypt uh, in london i met dr safwat which was instead this muslim who was doing this uh, who was a sufi known sufi who was doing some prayers uh, to actually help me out. And he viewed me and he says, okay, you have this uh, case of demonic possession we need to sort out in Egypt. And uh, maybe Madame Fula will be able to help you out once you go down to Egypt. So everything was kind of like line made in a way, you know, that uh, I was capable of uh, freeing myself from uh, this uh, demonic uh, presence. Uh, but it wasn't like I had opened uh myself to the demonic i uh simply was fighting the demonic and uh, fighting a magical war because when you're fighting with these people it's a magical war no mm -hmm. and this guy is nikolai fritz i talk about this by the way partly in volume one of my confessions but i also talk about uh, the subject of course of uh, uh, my exorcism and stuff uh, always here in this uh, book which is uh, of course uh, for me a very important book because like I said it's really it, it tells uh, really understand for a lot of people that there is a connection between also the demonic and the modern technology in fact uh, here there is an image of the satanic film evils uh, um, E how it's called evil speak which you can find actually on youtube uh, and it's uh, a very twisted movie that uh, talks about uh, this latin text this old grimoire interacting with the uh, with the artificial intelligence and kind of like sparking uh, some kind of demonic activity so let's remember that the first computer uh, from Apple, Apple II was introduced in 1977 and sold for the price of $666.66. Just to, no? Uh, that number? Eh? Always that number, it's reoccurring at times. It's reoccurring. But uh, I mean, I think that uh, people need to understand that 
that uh, then uh, at times when you fight the demonic, uh, these things can come back into your life. I remember with Christy, we had this experience uh, that uh, maybe she discussed uh, with uh, only partly with uh, Professor Amamoto during her own uh, it's hard to talk about them. I was able to write about it yes. and everything, but then when it comes to finding the words yes. to actually speak about something like that, mm. non I mean, you did a great job of talking about your experience, but I have a really time, hard time like finding the words to speak about it again. Yeah. So yeah. It, it was, and why you think is that? It's hard because, you know, there's a beginning, a middle, and an end to the story. And, you know, you just can't pop in the middle of it and start talking about it, mm. you know. And so, like, during a, a TV, um, you know, a, a interview or mm. whatever, it's hard to just, oh, you know, you're talking about something lightly. Oh, you, you know, this happened to you in your book. And then, you know, just to go into it and start talking about it when, you know, I... <sighs> It was just it was a horrible experience so i mean it took it took a really long time for me to get over it so it happened in estonia mm -hmm. with that with i think we talked about it briefly on this yeah show, so. there was yeah. like uh you know we, we ended up being uh, uh they thought we were russians and uh, uh I, mean, but I mean i i it, saw things with my own eyes mm. with my own skeptical eyes that mm. i couldn't explain and so, you know, when you see something in front of you and you're not, you're not drunk or on drugs or anything, you're mm -hmm. completely sane and you see something happen, mm -hmm. you try to rationalize, you know, your rational mind comes in and you're trying to figure out what happened, but then you can't figure it out. And then at a point you feel a little bit nuts because mm -hmm. you're like, I can't explain this. This just happened and I can't explain it. And, and, and then, you know, a lot of praying, you have to have a good faith. Mm -hmm. So you know, you put your life in God's hands and that's what I did. And, you know, I, I was able to write about it. But, mm. um, yeah, afterward, I just didn't want to think about it anymore. You know, I just wanted to go home. And luckily it happened in a different place than home. I think if it happened at, in the house at home, it would have been harder for me to separate because it happened in a different country. It was it was easy, easier, you know, you get on a plane and you feel like you're leaving it behind. So that's not following you. Mm -hmm, so. mm -hmm. But you think that instead uh, you will have uh, suffered if you had that problem, huh? Uh, I mean, suffer you couldn't stay in the same place if you had that kind no, of problem. No, I think that it helped me that it didn't happen at home because it was truly incredible. Mm. So, And we were dumb. I mean, from all the things that ever happened to you in your life, mm we were both dumbfounded like i mean i we just pretty much on the way home we just sat there and shaking our heads <laughs> you literally just you think about it and then you shake your head mm. so anyway now uh today of course uh, uh we are uh, discussing also uh, aside from this uh, the latest uh, from the world news no and what is happening. One of the things that struck me this morning, uh, heading a drudge, was this article about wealthy Americans that are buying second passports as a plan B for their families, citing the they basically want to leave the USA. I don't understand how these wealthy Americans think that it's more safe to be in another country if there is... Uh, some kind of turmoil in the world. I mean, this is completely demented. We are, of course, in a chaotic world, but the number of wealthy Americans buying golden passports has skyrocketed over the last three, past three years. I want to get rid of my other passport. <laughs> I want to get rid of my European passport. I don't want to have anything to do with my European passport. I think Europe is completely under demonic control. Um, and uh, of course, the digitalization process that is bringing you towards the mark of the beast is also made out of, a, of, of, of uh, crafting the, the, the social environment and the demonic is part of it. So it is, uh, like I said earlier, uh, by citing uh, Eric Manko's uh, 
Markov's book, uh, a environment in which uh, you have a whole society that is getting possessed. And statistically, of course, mental disorders are often, unfortunately, cases of possessions which are misinterpreted because that is what happens uh, often. Misinterpreting a case of possession, it's very dangerous because then you will uh, rely on drugs and stuff that can't ever bring you any benefit. No? So it's, it's actually the best thing to do is to avoid in any way possible and imaginable the, 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 the fact that uh, you can end up in, in a mental asylum. No? Mm. We are, of course, uh, here in a world that is becoming increasingly unstable in, and people, of course, are worried. But then there is also the demonic that afflicts people and makes them even more nuts. That uh, I mean, of course, you have the depression that is natural in a person that loses his job. You have, of course, a depression that is natural, but then there is a moment in which that depression could be used itself by a demonic entity to enter your life. I don't know if it makes sense. No? What about um, the rise in suicides? I was wondering, do demons, once they possess a person, do they, do they, don't they want them to stay alive so they can keep their, like, or did they have their soul and they just want them? I don't understand. You know what I'm talking about? Like, after, are they still possessed? If they're possessed and then they kill themselves, like, do they go to heaven? Um, what happens, like, when somebody's possessed? Well, if somebody's possessed, he's possessed. Uh, he has uh, lost the reason and the lucidity to actually uh, be able uh, to to still be in line with God, but it's obvious, uh, it's obvious that you can be still saved. However, what about all those uh, methods you see in the street? Those people are willingly putting themselves in the hands of the devil. They're doing it for a substance and met, met, those methods are the closest thing to really a possessed person that you can have. I mean, when you see them in the street, some of them, I mean, doesn't take much, guys. You just have to go. Nowadays, it's full of methods, unfortunately. Southern California is full of them. Here, we are lucky enough that the weather is a bit too hot. Uh, but if you go to LA, you can really find them nowadays at every corner. But even here, the other day, I was watching, you know, you have the occasional, you know, when you go, especially uh, on certain parts of town, and, uh, and it happens. You see these people going around, fighting the invisible forces, uh, moving like, <gasps> shouting and doing that kind of thing. That is the sign of demonic possession. That is uh, the fact that they have opened themselves with these uh, uh, drugs. Uh, they have opened the portals to the demonic. That is uh, basically what is happening. That's sad. And, uh, and when I see it, I'm like, uh, you know, I would like to be able to help. But there is, at certain levels, there is very little you can do. And there is a lot of risk that you might take by challenging the demonic. Uh, and, and, and of course, I will always refer to professionals that, uh, the exorcists that can, you know, always... Uh, carry on profession and exorcism myself i've uh, used to do it in italy with uh, we did it with Lucian and chandra with people who you know really professionally knew professionally they they were they, they, they knew all the prayers by even by heart the latin prayers and stuff and they had experience enough to conduct an exorcism and i i was able thanks to my faith to conduct this kind of things uh, uh, this exorcist for the benefit of some people, but also for some places, because you can also exercise a place. There is also maybe a place that is possessed. Cases of, of so-called portergeist, 
they are intrinsically connected to some kind of demonic uh, form uh, presence that is, uh, is is lurking around that you need to exercise. No, it's like uh, that place, Skimwalker Range. I mean, it's obvious that the, the demonic there is is way out of control. And, and 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 going there, like for example, they did for that TV show and stuff, and kind of. You can risk your own life. In fact, people got uh, severely, they got sick. Remember that guy got some kind of tumor in his head or something? I mean, you can get really sick, so you have to be very careful. It's not like only a spiritual battle. It can also become a, uh, a real a real battle also that uh, can, can, can have influence in your physique because from the... From the spirit, let's remember that every sickness we have on, in our body has some kind of origins of a, a um, spiritual nature. Mm -hmm. And so by fighting the demonic, you can really get sick. And <laughs> I mean, you know, not even, you know, slightly sick. You can get seriously sick. Because they attach to different parts of your body, don't they? Well, uh, uh, yeah, they can also do that. Of course, attaching, attach, uh, uh, getting a, uh, a demon in a specific part of the body because, like we know, we have a connection. Uh, you know, our body we have chakras. You know, like in the Eastern tradition of the chakras or the sephirot uh, of the Jewish tradition, um, define that each part of our body has a specific, you no, know, energy, specific key. Uh, and, and unlocking uh, the demonic through your head, but also through your sexual organs or through other parts of your body. Through your stomach, if you are a great eater and you, the only thing you do is to eat food and you become as big as a house, that's, that can be a form of demonic possession. So from the, the metaphysical to the physical. Uh, I, I will, uh, of course, uh, uh, put uh, here on the screen one of the ways that we have to finance our show is GoFundMe. We also have Fundly and we have Cash App if you're in the United States or Great Britain. Um, and we thank this, the people who, uh, out of their good heart, every now and then donate to us. Uh, and, 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 and make it possible for us to carry on in our mission. So thank you so much for those people. You know who you are, and uh, you are always in our prayers and thoughts. And, uh, I mean, talking about the demonic, don't you remember when in Italy, right at the uh, beginning of their unusual choice of following one of the most restricting uh, uh, vaccine passports uh, in the whole of the Western world, you know? There was at the same time the inauguration of a demonic gate that uh, it was an art piece of art. It was an art exhibition called Inferno, you remember? Yeah, yeah. And uh, they uh, inaugurated, uh, and it was crazy to see how the Italians... Uh, at, on the same day, we're inaugurating an exhibition based on the Inferno of Dante Alighieri with this specific gate of hell made by Rodin. I mean, it was definitely a diabolical synchronicity. Now, it can be, of course, a chance, but it's much more possible. And I write about this in volume seven of my Confessions, uh, that this uh, was instead uh, a well calibrated move from the demonic side of uh, of the new world order. So I, I hope that uh, people realize that there is uh, definitely a lot of evil at work. I have actually some images of when they placed, and then they, they didn't place these gates of hell in any place in a museum which is part, it's actually, the Scuderia del Quirinale is part of the living quarters of the President of the Italian Republic, which itself has as a symbol a pentagram. So just, I mean, watch this. This was when they brought it in. 
that was the exhibition inferno made by a mason jean claire and then uh, this was when they were actually bringing from france spending money to literally bring the gates of hell by auguste rodin a copy of it to rome it's, it's incredible i mean and it happened right at the start of their hideous choice of uh, uh, locking people up if they didn't or actually in, in, uh, this whole thing has stopped uh, thanks god on the first of may but from that moment onwards till the first of may the italians had to show the vaccine passport even if they had to take a coffee at the bar even outside of the bar they couldn't uh, have access to a restaurant without showing the vaccine passport all of this clearly indicating a demonic link between the choice of uh, basically with a vaccine passport deciding uh, your life giving uh, I mean, the Italians love to go to the bar every day, and every day they have to show this thing. A lot of people stop, of course, going to bars, to restaurants. They couldn't go anymore around. Even nowadays, still, uh, there is, uh, of course, some places in Italy where you still have to use this vaccine pass, and probably they will reinstate it uh, later on. They usually like uh, to take it out at this point, like I did last year, when the summer season is starting, and they... Uh, like uh, to uh, welcome the tourists, you know? but then in the autumn they go back into probably into another lockdown mode and you can only accede to all the services if you have this kind of vaccine passport, which is, of course, many Christians have said it is the mark of the beast. Now, you can be skeptic about that as much as you want, but the fact that you put all your... Um, data inside uh, your personal private data inside the, something that can in the future in the near future like already is happening in sweden being then inserted in a microchip that is inserted in your body that is really what the mark of the beast is all about so you can laugh as much as you want and say oh christian fundamentalists uh, are still uh, saying that this is the mark of the beast and it's not true and on that I mean, of course everybody's free to believe whatever they want of course i hope i don't get censored because i give my own opinion because uh, you know we are no longer free to say that uh, this world is going to hell we are no longer free to say our own opinion because of course cyber satan and the algorithms controlled by him intervene so um i find it uh, incredible that for months and months uh, in a country like italy there was up until january this uh, hideous gates of hell and at the same time one of the most stringent lockdowns and the po possibility of only accessing uh, social life through the use of, uh, of a demented vaccine pass passport and uh, so they don't want people like somebody saying in the in the in the chat waking up to the truth absolutely thank you so much for tuning in because today's important episode and we would like now to open up the phone lines to hear also about your own experiences with the demonic i know that it's not easy a time to discuss a subject like this i know that a lot of people feel like uh, it's a very private and personal matter but we know that uh, the viewers of the leo zagami show will be probably ready for uh, delivering their own testimony uh, and, and and in this way also help people understand the dangers of doing certain things so here i put on the screen now the number of uh, uh the number of our phone and we welcome all the people who are interested in in calling so they can tell us their own personal experience maybe if you want to ask some questions about it uh we are uh, of course here for that too uh, 
uh, Leon Christie Zagami, the Leo Zagami show today, May 7th, 2022. Uh, we are, of course, uh, with the lines open, ready to take your call. Plus one, nine seven zero five seven zero zero five seven seven six three six nine. Sorry, my, my English today not so good. No? So you <laughs> have to be careful of entry points. Yes. So, Don't open yourself to things uh, like the occult uh, too much. I mean, the occult uh, is, of course, a subject I discuss very much. But, uh, guys, is I, there a difference between watching this show and opening up a book? No, of course. Well, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, I would suggest that people who study the occult do it uh, by refraining in uh, any way, on any ritual uh, attempt. Uh, or uh, manifesting demons simply by opening some uh, grimoire and starting reciting, reciting phrases uh, like uh, thinking that they will not affect them or just, uh, you know, for curiosity. Uh, you need to be responsible when you do these things, uh, even these studies and this specific subject. Um, mainly P.O. of course used to warn about the dangers uh, and not to get involved in any way or form absolutely and he was absolutely right and that's why he was also the mentor of our dear friend the late Jordan Maxwell and by the way regarding Jordan Maxwell I wanted to show is it this? yes that thing uh, that I was given which is very nice I mean this is um, these basically are some comic uh, <laughs> comics strips, how you say comics? Yeah, comics, uh, comics, uh, comic, uh, books. comic books uh, <laughs> that were done a few years ago, uh, inspired by the work of Jordan wow, Maxwell. That's cool. And uh, there is a very interesting material here, and uh, they're very rare, apparently. And they were done, I think, in 2008. Um, And uh, of course, all kind of uh, of subjects that uh, that we have uh, seen, and uh, including the the demonic realm, of course, that uh, it's, it's, uh, it's it's present. And so, no, definitely a very interesting, uh, very interesting uh, comic. Yes. How you say? Super cool, somebody is saying. Yes, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and then there is this one in particular. Oh, that's Illuminati. <laughs> <laughs> this is very good. Uh, and actually, watch, watch how it says inside. Huh? Huh. And uh, so, yeah, the, definitely very interesting. And uh, of course, uh, you remember, I had also somebody in Italy 10 years ago who did a comic uh, inspired by my work. I had it, uh, I left it in Italy. I should get uh, yeah. I should get my mother to send it to me. Uh, amongst the many things that unfortunately I had to leave. Um, but the important thing is that I'm here with you, alive and kicking now, here. Nobody's calling in, I guess everybody's. Nobody wants to talk about it. No, Maybe wants. we should ask a different question. Uh, well, I mean, that's no problem. In the meantime, as they're not calling in, though, we have some things that we would like to show you uh, and, and, and of course, discuss. Ah, oh, somebody, they're, they're, they're calling, but they're not anonymous. Welcome. Uh, so where are you calling from uh, and who are you? <laughs> hey, guys. Hi there. Uh, do you want to stay anonymous? Um, half enough, but sure. Okay. <laughs> so are you calling from the United States? Uh, right now, no. I, I was actually born and raised in L.A., but I haven't been in the States for, I don't know, at least a couple of decades. Huh. How are you guys? Good. Very well, very well. Uh, any questions, any comments about our topic today? Or story? <laughs> uh, sure. Without taking too much time, first of all, Leo, I... I know you and followed you for a long time. We kind of have some mutual friends from back in the day, but I'm not going to get into that right now. Okay. So, you know, I'd like to tell you something that happened to me personally, uh, something on topic. Um, I, you know, 
far back as I can remember, I've been into the occult, probably since I was a teenager. Um, that's not really the point. The point is that I was at a, I was into black metal, and I was in a, at a concert one night back in 2004 at a black metal concert, and I was attacked by, I was lynched basically by. Okay. Uh, let me, people, let, you know, let, let, metal yeah, let me just say to the people who are following us with this black metal. Uh, well, we are talking okay. here about very dark form of music. Actually, uh, uh, some of it comes out of Scandinavia. Norway, in particular, had some of the best or worst, depending on the points of view, uh, black metal bands ever. It also led That's to right. the burning of several churches and the killing of uh, a uh, band member. Uh, and, and there was a lot of controversy around that. So uh, here we are basically discussing it today with you, your own personal experience with this kind of music that led you to a demonic confrontation of some wow. kind. Please uh, well, carry lucky, on. I'm lucky to be here, to be honest, to, to be alive and walking around. And they tried to take my life. And it's funny because a close friend of mine, my best friend, he, he took his life uh, a year later when he was 25 years old. But, but a close friend of mine, he, he told me he had a dream of it, of, of something like, like a, you know, a circle of people in black around me, beating me. And he just told me about it. And I kind of, you know, brushed, brushed it off. And lo and behold, you know, this thing happens to me. And I don't know how I survived it. I obviously was completely broken into pieces. You know, all my ribs were broken, punctured, uh, punctured my lungs. Uh, they tore a bunch of internal organs, you know, my liver and pancreas was all torn. Um, concussion, you know, I was all messed up in the head for a few months, at least six months to a year after that. I, I, you know, I, it really changed the way I looked at life and the way I see things. And mm -hmm. made me think of, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Maybe we think. Okay, but uh, uh, sorry if I interrupt you. But uh, how did this oh, okay. happen? Uh, because I mean, yes, you said you went to a concert. Uh, the city was lynched. You, yeah, you were lynched, but you. It's you, so bad, you man. It's like it was such a small scene back then, and you know, kind of everybody knew everybody. I don't know if it was something personal, if it was something planned, if there was some kind of cult that they were after me or what. But it, it just started kind of inside of the venue, and and this guy grabbed me and, and threw me, and he was like tore my shirt, and then made up some story later on that they thought I was trying to to touch the monitors on staff or something like that. So I went outside all pissed off, you know, they kind of ruined my night from this guy, and he, I guess, thought that he was afraid I went out to get my friend, so he came out to minutes later with all his buddies. And we both knew people from, you know, different bands there. We both had a bunch of friends there. And so he came out with his friends and they made a circle around me. And I tried to talk to him and started, you know, asking him why, why he tore my shirt and why he was up with the violence. And I couldn't even get out a sentence. And they started, you know, punching me and kicking me from every direction. And... This started outside of the venue, but I started running for my life. I, you know, I ran as fast as I could, and they chased me. Um, and about, I don't know, 100 meters, 200 meters, I guess, you know, for an American audience. Now, yard, after this terrible, yard. Yeah. After this terrible but, experience, you know, uh, did you still follow the same kind of music, or well, you finally realized that it wasn't well, really... Well, after, a good scene. You know, long story short, so yeah, they chased me and I tripped and, and then, you know, I, I, I lost consciousness and the rest was, I was told after. But um, can you repeat the question about the music? Or about yeah, no, I mean, uh, if, if, no, no, after, after this experience, did you then severe your ties with this uh, music scene that, of course, was uh, deleterious? Well, the scene, yes. The music itself, to me, is so much more than music. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's a way of life. It's it's uh, it's uh, it's like a religion. But I mean, the, don't I you mean, feel but, like the music, in particular, the black metal scene, and the music is filled with a frequency that is deleterious, and that pushes people I mean, to a certain kind of aggressivity, no? Because I mean, you were yeah, subject. At the time, to it. at the time, I I also was you know dealing with a lot of. Uh, 
uh, ritualistic uh, practices and dealing with things that maybe I shouldn't have been dealing with. Okay, so uh, let, let's pause it here. Outlook on life in general was very anti-God. I was very against God. Okay. And after that happened mm. to me, it kind of put me in my place where I felt like maybe I deserved that, you know, for what I was doing and what I was uh, saying. What, uh, can and, you tell us uh, what were you doing? You were part of uh, some uh, order, uh, you were part of a sect or uh, something? You were doing it. Just... My, my close friends, but I guess if, if you looked at us from the side, you could consider us something like that. But we didn't, we didn't call it. Uh, okay. We didn't call ourselves anything. But like you, that, but you, we like know, we said during the show, you played around with the grimoires and stuff like that. Yeah, we would walk around in cemeteries at night and go to the forest and camp for a few days. And we would uh, uh, study texts uh, from a lot of Russian uh, Orthodox uh, witches and uh, a lot of grimoire texts from the past that uh, have been translated and. Uh, 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 yeah, and I don't, I don't know if you have any questions specifically, but um, it took me many years to make the connections later on how how these the things may have had to do with what happened to me, mm -hmm. and obviously after that happened, I completely changed my you know completely one eighty flipped my change on life and started loving life and. And I'm I'm too grateful for every day that I have. And uh, now, yeah, uh, before, <laughs> of course, uh, very uh, very interesting, very interesting uh, experience testimony. We we thank you for your testimony today because it will definitely uh, make some people who are maybe viewing us understand the dangers. Uh, uh, of, of certain situations, certain environments. However, I have one question for you because we discussed here in the show also the fact that a lot of Americans, uh, wealthy Americans, were leaving the United States of America due to a number of reasons. Now, you seem to be one of them, an expat. Uh, what do you think of these wealthy Americans that are buying second passports and as a plan B? Uh, citing the pandemic, uh, the, the, the infamous climate change and political turmoil. Do you really think you can be safer than in the United States around the world? In most countries, you can't really detain a weapon legally. Do you really think you are safer? Man, Leo, to be honest, I, I would love to come back home if I, if I could. But right now, especially with everything that's happening in the world, I really don't see that happening. Um, as far as carrying a weapon, I mean, in the U.S. probably, but if you're not an American, I don't see any reason to. No, but uh, um, what I, do you I'm think? Not sure the laws are. Yeah, no, what do you think of all these wealthy people who are making this choice of going to go abroad, having this plan B, like something terrible is going to happen here in the United States that they're going to have to flee the country? I mean, it, it seems like the whole world is falling uh, uh, from grace, uh, if there was ever one, and that uh, you know, you can go wherever you want inside this uh, little planet of ours, but you're gonna be in the shit, whatever, wherever you go. Isn't that the case? Well, my opinion is, oh man, <laughs> uh, I'm trying to make this simple. Um, they can do whatever they want, they've been planning this, you know, for years, for a long sure. time, and they, they're gonna do it whether we like it or not. The question is for whether we are going to let that affect us in a negative way and make, you know, use that in, as an excuse not to, to fix ourselves and to make that, 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 I, I are. that I completely agree with that you can't be carried away by. Like, I'll, give you, I'll give you technology and the internet. It, it was, you know, it's a military weapon. It was, it was created by the military, but, but now with open source software and everything, it's beautiful. You have people that are using this technology and developing tools that are helping us yeah. to, to, to fight them. And, and, and I think that, that with technology and with, uh, I don't know if Elon Musk and Twitter and all this uh, tracking Hollywood script is going to play a part in it. But I do see, I do have hope that 
with with technology and with uh, with good. I think uh, I think uh, with Elon art. with Elon uh, you are seeing a dualistic uh, bipolar kind of uh, approach. He is like on one side yeah. defending the freedom of speech, on the other side. I saw this morning he's basically giving money to his employees who want to go and have abortion in another state. So, I mean, he's kind of like being like, uh, you know, he wants to uh, be in with both crowds. <laughs> it's, it's kind of like yeah. really well, twisted. He goes, you know? he goes back with the Burning Man crowd and those guys. So he is still somehow tied to those guys, to Silicon yeah. Valley. You know, his, his wife's crying. And so they're mm -hmm. all in kind of that crowd. Um, but yeah, you know, what can I say? He, I, I see our, our world, our, our existence as the inexact uh, um, representation of what's happening on the metaphysical realm. So if we're saying whether it's Elon or whoever, you know, these are just things that we're seeing, whether we understand them or not. But it just proves that there's stuff. I mean, this is a guy. This is a guy who basically, like I said here, I mean, I even have, I think, a citation of Elon Musk right at the beginning of this book. It says, uh, I am really quite close. I am very close in the cutting edge in AI, and it scares the hell out of me. He's the one who said that basically AI might unleash really the ultimate demons. Yet he is the one who is building the computer brain interface. <laughs> I mean, and 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 and, and Sky whatever link uh, internet in the flying in the sky with a bunch of satellites. So thank you so much for uh, your call today. And of course, we will be taking uh, uh, more calls. So uh, please call in uh, our phone number plus one nine seven zero five seven seven six three six nine. We always have. Uh, uh, tremendous callers with very interesting uh, things to say now, Christy. Yeah. So, uh, the Leo Zagami show uh, welcomes you uh, with open arms uh, if you want to share your experiences about the demonic, about demonic possession. You can also decide to uh, be anonymous today because I know that this subject doesn't always. Uh, no, it's people want to be very private about their lives at times. I know some of their voices, though. Well, you can, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Christy. Don't expose them. <laughs> okay, guys, the lines are open. Plus one nine seven zero five seven seven six three six nine. Uh, of course, we still have uh, our show uh, for uh, another fifteen minutes. Uh, we will be here with you. You know that movie, The Exorcist. <laughs> Yes. Uh, yeah, somebody, somebody is calling. <laughs> Christy, where are you calling from, and what's your name? If you want to give us your name. Hello. My name is Gray. Okay. Hello. Hello so there. Hello. Yes. And where are you calling from? Nairobi, Kenya. Oh, wow. that's that's pretty far away. <laughs> Did you say your name is Grace? Um, no, well, no, you didn't, didn't say your name. I thought she said my name is Grace. No, no, <laughs> I didn't say yeah, yeah. What, what's your name? Sorry, again, Chris, you create confusion. What, what's your name? Sorry, maybe she's anonymous. Okay, I said my name is Grace. I'm calling from Nairobi, Kenya. Yes, okay, 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 I okay, get it. Hey, so the name was right. Okay, okay, now in Kenya, Nairobi, you have a bunch of juju people and a bunch of possessed people. <laughs> uh, isn't that the case? We actually, I'll tell you what. You people need to come to Africa. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I've I've been understand. I actually been in Africa I, once. I've been in Africa once. Uh, I, I, you know, we're I, in Africa. I'm inviting. I'm in. I'm inviting you to Kenya. Oh, Kenya is a little bit too far away for me. <laughs> I, I went to Northern <laughs> Africa because, of course, it's close to Italy. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I'm uh, of course here in the United States, so it's a little bit far away. But uh, do you have uh, an sure. experience that you would like to share with us today about the demonic? I don't. I don't think I would want to begin with my experiences because there are a bit too many. Well, um, one, one. but I just. Yeah, there are very, very many, and I don't know which one to pick and which one to leave. But uh, you need to know that most of the stuff that you're talking about, or I need your listeners to know, everything that you're talking about is really, really on point. Thank you. And I don't know if they really understand how real it is, because I know many of the Western world people do not get it. They do not understand that these realms you're talking about are real. 
and they are actually portals that are openable and people can interact with very strange entities and there's so many things that go on. I mean, in most of Africa, you would hear it's Jesus plus something else. You know, they would not be waiting for, you know, Jesus to do something. It's always Jesus or God plus some little bit of something else. Well, uh, the, the animist... Uh, witchcraft. Well, animism is very strong, of course, all over Africa, but it's also a way that, as you know, uh, makes uh, people subject to some witch doctors and uh, some weird uh, rituals that... Uh, initiatic rituals that then enslave them to a system. Let's see, for example, the Nigerian Mafia rituals and the way that they are inducted into at times even human slavery. Uh, then we have other parts of Africa. I mean, I've read, uh, and I should go back to read, I have a lot of books about black magic practices all over Africa. And at times I'm like really scared also of the, the way the wealthy people in Africa sacrifice children very easily to accomplish goals right. of some kind. And I'm sure you can confirm yeah, that. Absolutely. Uh, but, uh, uh, yeah. A experience, even one that you can share with, because I know that a lot of viewers, uh, especially because you're calling from Africa, and Africa is full of this stuff. Uh, I mean, personally myself, well, I would like to go and exercise the whole of Africa from north to south, and 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 and, and it should be <laughs> and should be done with an army of exorcists. That uh, really, uh, because I mean, uh, uh, your continent is probably the most possessed continent of the whole planet. And uh, I mean, without maybe counting, not. Maybe, may maybe not, not maybe we still have, we still have China, South America and no, all that. I will say you still have China because China is like a land of its own where there is no God. And that is right. like really scary too. Uh, and, and of course, you mentioned the South America because there's a big influence also from uh, the African animism in South America, uh, Santeria, uh, then you have Ifa, you have a lot of things. Yes. yes. So you have basically a lot of that that unfortunately arrived also in, in South America. So what can we say to the viewers today about uh, defending themselves? What is the best way of defending yourself from all this uh, evil? There is, there is no other way other than by prayer there is no other way other than prayer i remember one time i was in bed and uh i was just laying there you know dozing off and coming on and just you know trying to whisper prayer here and there and then i fell asleep and suddenly i had um in the course of the day i had prayed for a woman who was having issues in her marriage. And I just didn't understand what it was. I just threw myself into it and thought that I could help her. And here I was just in and out of sleep, in and out of sleep. And suddenly I fell into a deep sleep. And these strange things just came to pick me up, like not my body, but my soul. I was laying in bed and I could watch myself being pulled out through the window. Mm. And I'm just calling out for Jesus. So you, you were in help that, me, in that moment, me, you know, help me. In that moment, you, you were subject to a sort of, of, of sleep paralysis uh, in that moment. You couldn't really move or you could move physically? I couldn't move. I you could not move at yes, all. Yes, sleep paralysis, of course. Yes, yes. Exactly. So I'm busy calling for help and I'm seeing myself going, but I know my body is on the bed, but my window is going, my, my body, my soul, whatever it was, was going out of the window. Wow. And, um, and so how you, how, you stopped, while, how you stopped this? How you stopped? After a short while, I suddenly slumped back into my body and um, <laughs> I said, Oh my goodness, what took you so long? You know, and then I just had this question. I had this question, who sent you there? You know, like, why did I go, you know, looking to help somebody else who I did not even know a history about? So it was very strange. And I, I thought, you know, we are all supposed to be praying for everybody and we are all supposed to be helping everybody. But I discovered that, you know, 
there are places you can go and there are places you cannot go because there are people who have decided to entrench themselves into certain entities and situations that you know other people are not strong enough or you know grown enough to be able to bring them out but for me in my ignorance i was thinking well here i am i'm a christian i can just pray for her and i will just you know be among the team that's praying for her to help her out of her situation but in the meantime i was praying for her but whatever it was she was going through looks like Maybe she hadn't done it, or I don't know. I can't judge her right now. Mm. But whatever it was, she was fighting came to fight me, and they were coming for me with a vengeance. I tell you, they were not one. It was not two. If I show you, if I could even put a an image of how they looked like, mm. it's so scary that even when I talk about it right now, I shake. I feel it so in my mind. But. Mm. but people should not entrench themselves into these kind of things because they are very very real mm-hmm. and the thing that just boggles me is the western world does not see it they just need mm-hmm. to i had a well it's it's mostly the lecturer problem who just never believed anything about witchcraft in africa ever and this uh, this guy and i told him you just need to be in africa a little longer and you would know uh, and who was this person a theologist sorry uh, excuse me you hear me hello it seems like the line the, the, hello sorry. Uh, yeah, yes sorry the line went no, I down yes uh, well, i was asking you who was this person a theologist uh, theology somebody who uh, who didn't believe who, who was this person somebody who didn't believe you were talking about a some, lecturer a lecturer but uh, the I, I, yeah I, I went to theology and this was one of my lecturers a very strong western you know and he didn't he believe uh, in, and he didn't believe but in all he this. never believed anything at all you know and mm. all the pastors in my class because i was the only one who was not a pastor they, he just did not believe all the things that they kept on telling him it was so comical you know and we always that, that is a big problem walk around yes. africa no that is a big problem in the 70s and 80s uh, just yeah. Af- yeah well i mean after the, S- the second vatican council uh, the catholic church uh, started to change and i remember the 70s and 80s in which of course uh, the exorcist movie was all over the place and people were watching it but always with a lot of detachment and you couldn't really talk about exorcism in the catholic church in the 80s because nobody will even admit it existed so i mean it was like mm-hmm. but what, what do you mean it, it doesn't exist it's on a, you know and, and so it, they were trying to to always uh, refer to the fact that no it's a very rare thing that the vatican takes on board the exorcist nowadays like we just read at the beginning of the show the whole thing is going mainstream you know and and and, and the fact that of course they have uh, uh at the beginning of the pan- i couldn't find actually the right article i was talking about because my catalog of articles is so big but i remember there was another article at the beginning of the pandemic which uh, uh, was denouncing the fact that the vatican didn't want to send exorcists in the home of people because they're scared of the virus i mean that is the most ridiculous thing i could ever hear but it actually helped the demonic become even more aggressive and more established mm. uh, here in the west closing the houses of worship the problem you mentioned mm. the majority of the people in the western world don't believe in this reality they don't care uh, they don't care because they are intrinsically believing only in the matter they are simply materialistic and when you are too materialistic that's mm. when the devil is actually has an easy a very easy uh, time no uh, and it, it can really uh, manage to uh, manipulate you completely in fact you know most of the times in our society today you see people that are completely possessed but they don't realize yeah. it sorry to interrupt you sorry to interrupt yeah. you but it's because they depend totally on their senses yeah and then at that point what is More the solution you know and that the solution then at that point becomes the senses solution the given by the 
uh, pharmaceutical companies that give you the psychology mm -hmm. the, the psychiatric drugs no and then it becomes uh, you know yeah. that becomes even worse because you are just feeding a demon with more demonic. Uh, uh, it's it's yeah, just exactly. you know it's, it's just it's just insane. But thank you so much for calling today and for giving your testimony from yes. from a continent that we uh, we don't always talk about, but actually we should make a whole show only about African magic, uh, which yeah. I studied very I like much, your accent. and it's uh, beautiful. and and <laughs> which I studied very much, uh, and uh, which uh, I think uh, it's it's very important to then realize that a lot of the magic that we are subject here in the West, uh, including some of the mm -hmm. black magic, which is carried on within Freemasonry and uh, other sects, oh, originates yeah. actually in Africa. Uh, a lot of people yes, don't it know. Does. It does. And uh, let me, let me yeah. interrupt you a little. Yeah. Um, before I, I, I go off, I just want to let you know, you are my favorite show, and I really, really enjoy watching the Zagami. Uh, now, if you would, you know, you are so passionate about Freemasonry. I mean, when you talk about it, you come alive. And the things I know about Freemasonry is a lot because I have interacted with so many of those people. And the things you say are really on point. I mean, they are accurate. They are a thousand percent accurate. And if there's anyone who questions about what you're saying, they really, really, really need to open their eyes and visit other parts of this world so that they can understand because the things that are busy corrupting the rest of the world are well maybe i'm just in the part of it well i mean in so africa for example wake up and see it yeah in africa for example the masonic network f uh, functions as a network of all the elites that of course sends their children mm -hmm. to school in the west but at the same time when they are there in oh, africa yeah. they follow the juju man and they do some hideous rituals which are completely antithetic to the enlightenment that they are oh. following in the west no? so definitely you are on point there thank you so much uh, again and please call us thank in the future you. because we're gonna dedicate uh, a show uh, to uh, to Africa as soon as I get some of my books from Italy <laughs> sent on the subject. Please do. Okay, okay, all the best. And Thank I'm you. glad you stayed alive. Okay. I'm glad you stayed alive. <laughs> Thank you very much. Alive and kicking still. <laughs> okay, that was of course our last phone call today. Uh, Rambo is arriving uh, to say bye bye to all of you, and of course. Uh, we, we have the, the, the last dance, you know, the last dance. Uh, the show has the last dance. <laughs> Here we are. It was a macabre show. A dance macabre is very appropriate. Here we are with Rambo. Rambo, what's up with you? Huh? I Rambo before. I didn't. Look, you have the same Hello, Rambetto. Okay, guys. Hey. Thank you for tuning wow. in. Please. Please share this video, put like. <laughs> Rambo today is out of control. I'm very energetic. Bye, everyone. Bye bye, everyone from the Zagamis uh, from Palm Springs, California. Four minutes past 12 here. Uh, not 12 in the night, 12 in the day. Eh? <laughs> And if you want to know more about the subject of today, this is the book on which most of today's show was based on, volume 6.66, uh, The Age of Cyber Satan, Artificial Intelligence and Robotics. Arrivederci! Arrivederci! And from Palm Springs, California. Here we go with a pizza. Hey, hey, we're making pizza. I'm making pizza. Yes, we're having a pizza bake before my Italian show. Bye bye, everyone. <laughs>